The long snaking summer airport lines may be gone, but for many, the sentiment has hung around like the wait times at Terminal 1. Pearson is not a crowd pleaser. A new study suggests the facility is among the worst in the world for passenger satisfaction. CTV's Beth McDonnell joins us from Pearson with the details. Beth. Nathan, the vast majority of people I spoke to today say things are getting better when it comes to traveling here at Pearson. But the study, it's not good, good news for the airport. The return to the skies has been fraught with frustrations at Pearson. Long lines, missed flights, bungled baggage. So how is it going now? Better for Mark Torrance. Leaving, it was incredibly fast. We were expecting the worst. We just flew in June of this year to California. It was a disaster. This time we were, from the time we were dropped off through security, through customs, under 10 minutes. But not so much for Richard Naismith on Tuesday. I got here about three hours before my flight, which is plenty of time, right? I was flying a one hour flight to, a little an hour and a half flight to Milwaukee. Um, so they held us going in through security until the boarding time was in their queue. And then when we went in, ultimately, two and a half hours later, I missed my flight. According to J.D. Power's annual customer satisfaction survey, Canada's busiest airport is ranked 16th out of 20 mega-sized facilities, making it among the lowest. It follows data compiled by FlightAware this spring and summer, ranking Pearson the worst for flight delays in the world. In a statement, the GTAA says, we recognize the frustrations that travelers have experienced recently at Pearson, and it's not what we want for our passengers. That's why we've been working with all of our airport partners, including government agencies and airlines, to make improvements throughout the travel journey and work towards returning to a world-class experience. What J.D. Power and the GTAA agree on is that Pearson has seen a large increase in passenger volumes post-COVID shutdowns. But where they differ is in the numbers. The GTAA says J.D. Power's sample size is too small to draw relevant conclusions, surveying 637 Pearson passengers, a small fraction compared to the millions of passengers who pass through. Hard to get into a statistical uh, argument, but uh, we've been doing this study for probably about 24 years now. Uh, we interview around 27 to 30,000 people a year about airports in North America, the U.S. and Canada. And uh, the sample size for uh, Toronto Pearson is six times what, our, what we consider to be our minimum sample size. The GTAA says the survey isn't a fair comparison because COVID protocols in the U.S. and Canada have differed. The ranking means more damage to the airport, says this air passenger rights expert. This is a further step in eroding and destroying the Canadian travel industry's reputation. The study was done between August 2021 and July 2022. The passenger rights expert you just saw there, he says blame needs to go towards the airlines. He says they sold too many tickets before there were really enough resources to handle those volumes. Reporting live at Pearson, I'm Beth McDonnell. Now back to Michelle and Nathan.